we're going to look at scatter plots with straight lines and what do the slope and the y-intercept of a line of best fit signify on a graph. First, let's take a look at some things first, what a slope is. A slope, remember, represents the rise over run on a graph, and otherwise the angle of the graph. This will help us to get a little bit more specific and help us to give more information than just general information with a scatter plot. The same thing with the y-intercept. This is our beginning point of our data. This can kind of help us tell us where how something is beginning. Now what we're really going to be focusing on today is this thing called a line of best fit. We're going to try and take, we know what a scatter plot is, and a scatter plot is data that we put on a coordinate plane, usually in the first quadrant, and we indicate what our data represents by putting a dot on how the two data sets compare. So if the data points on a scatter plot show that association, you can draw a straight line that models the general trend of the data. This line of best fit or trend line will probably not fit all the data points exactly. However, if the line you draw is a good fit, it will be close to most of the data points. Remember not to consider any outliers when drawing a trend line. You don't want to consider an outlier because what an outlier will do is skew our data. So here we're taking a look at a scatter plot of the number of sponsors that are used to raise money and the amount of money that they can raise from that. We have a bunch of data points here and we have one data point out here. This is going to be our outlier. So we're not going to concern ourselves with the outlier right now. We're just going to take a look at these points. And as we look at those points, we're going to try and draw a straight line through it and create what we call almost like an average. If it's going through the middle of the points and kind of creating that average. Now, let's take a look at what the slope of this line would be. If we go from point to point, we know that we would count boxes. This is three boxes up and four boxes over. But we also have to know that each box does not represent one. If we notice over here on the y-axis where the amount raised is, we notice that the difference is 40 each time. Each box represents 40. On the x-axis where the number of sponsors is, the each increment is put up by 2. So we're going to use that to calculate what our slope is. So we're going to take a look at rise over run. And we're going to say that this is 3 divided by 4. And what we're going to do, it's really not 3, but it's 3 boxes times 40 and 4 boxes times 2. If we go to simplify that, we get 120 divided by 8. Okay, we can reduce this we know that 4 can go into both of these. So that would give us 30 divided by 2, which when reduced down is 15. And we'll put that over 1 so that we can do some explanation for it. So the slope of this line would be 15. Now, what does this slope represent? Well, we have to remember that the rise rep represents the dollar raise, so $15. The number of sponsors, so what this is telling us that for every sponsor that we find, we can raise $15 for our cause on the average. So if we're trying to raise a certain amount of money, this would help us to know how many people we needed to contact to make sure that we reached our goal. So it's important to take a look at that. We also can look at it a little bit differently in another way. So here I'm going to go to pages in the novels and times checked out from the library. First of all, let's describe this association. We notice that it has a downward trend. What does that mean? That means that as the pages in the novel increase, the number of times it gets checked out from the library decreases. We do have a point way out here. This is our outlier. We know our outlier could be books such as Harry Potter or Hunger Games or Twilight, something that's very popular amongst young people, but not necessarily um, the norm. Most big sick books are not checked out by students. So we can assume that this is an outlier in a special case. Now, what we want to do is take a look at this and put a line of best fit through it. And as we put a line of best fit through, we can draw this line here. And while we have this line here, we're going to take a look at the data points. And again, we are going to find the slope of this line. So if we're going from point to point, one, two, three, four boxes down, and one, two, three, boxes over to the right. And again, we know that it's rise divided by run. 
we're going to take that 4, and since it's a negative 4, we're going down. We have a negative 4 boxes times 3. Again, we got to make sure what our boxes represent. Here on the rise, times checked out from the library, every box is worth 2. On the run, pages in a novel, every box is worth 40. So now we're going to multiply that, so we get negative 8 divided by 120. We can divide both of these by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 120 by 4 is 3. We can do it again, because 2 can go into 30, negative 1 over 15. So what this is telling us is that for every 15 pages in a book that gets added, one less person will check it out of the library. That's a pretty substantial thing to know and how it represents. Now, we can also use our trend line to predict outcomes. So if we wanted to predict something, so for example, we wanted to predict how many times a 360-page novel was checked out, we can take a look here at 360, go up to our trend line, and take a look, and know that approximately five times a book with 360 pages will get checked out. So this kind of helps librarians to decide what books to talk in their library, things like that. We could also, if we were able to, extend our line and create a, see if I can extend this a little bit, maybe not, but if we could extend our line, let me get a green color here and do that, if we could extend our line way up there and see kind of where it's going to cross the y-axis, we can write ourselves an equation for this line. Let's say it's going to cross it 24 times. Let's say that's the max, that something gets, or I should say 1, 2, 3, in there by 2, so 18, 20, 22, 24, 20, 22, 24, 26, let's say 26 times. We can write ourselves an equation. So y equals negative 1 x plus 26. So we can write an equation of this line as well. And this kind of helps also in, in coming up and making predictions.